with the phono, discovery phono, the suspension is quite interesting here. How did you come up with this kind of idea? In our previous phono, we could suspend the phono part, the signal part within uh, the, the rack, the Kronos rack. So yeah. we had this, this possibility mm -hmm. and a lot of customers who had the complete analog solution right. add the suspension with the phono. Now the suspension with the signal part of a phono is super important mm -hmm. because uh, especially with a tube phono, yeah. tubes are microphonic right. and if you have you know, the chassis mm -hmm. transmitting vibrations coming back from the speakers, uh -huh. there's going to be coloration, there's yeah. going to be a lower signal uh, noise ratio. Uh, it's not going to be as dynamic. It's not going to be as free of influences, mm -hmm. uh, depending how loud you play your system, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. So, so on this phono, I wanted to have it on its own cradle right. because it allows us more levels of isolation mm -hmm. than just using the suspension. Okay. And this uh, sort of uh, the way the suspension is done here uh -huh. is uh, very good at keeping the chassis not too wide. Right. So the suspension part is only a very small part of the width of the unit. Mm -hmm. And so it, it came out that we designed it this way and I, I I think it's, uh, it's, it, it, it might change the way a lot of electronic equipment mm -hmm. is built because having a really suspended um, uh, component yeah. electronically is super important. Right. It's important for a turntable, but it's equally important, particularly in the phono stage uh -huh. because you're starting off from such a small signal right. to a 66 dB gained right signal right. which is in the end 2 to the power 22 uh -huh. so every time you add 3 db you double the sound yeah. so you put threes 22 times in 66 uh -huh. so in other words 2 to the power 22 and 2 to the power 22 2 times 2 22 times right. is 1 to over a million right. in terms of linear scale right. so the phono is the most difficult component uh -huh electronically, I believe, to develop yeah. because of this unbelievable amplification of signal. Mm -hmm. And any slight noise will be amplified many, many times. Right. Hence the importance of the suspension, uh -huh. hence the, uh, the importance of uh, developing a circuit that is truly quiet. This display yes. is quite new you, you didn't have this kind of display before right it's funny you say new yeah. i mean it it it's it's it looks new but it's really more of a retro uh design display in the sense that it, we don't use digital display why on, is that on this unit because every time you have a a, a digital display you have chips yeah. you, you, and they make noise so this uh basically display which is operated by the uh, this button here. Uh -huh. uh, each each light mm -hmm. is an individual uh -huh. LED. Okay. So and and it's basically a transparency, a see-through, uh -huh. and each LED has its own little reflector. Uh -huh. So this is more like what you had in a reel-to-reel machine mm -hmm. right. uh, in the 70s or in the 60s. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're all individual lights. It's not, it's not a, a, a digital display. It's an analog display. Uh, the selector has, uh, uh, is, is, is uh, multiple pole so that the uh, electrical uh, current, the, 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 the current for, the, for the, the LEDs is not mixing with the signal. Okay. So it's, it's completely separate. Parallel. Now on the, uh, I'll just turn this one on here. Uh, on the uh, SCPS or the turntable, yeah. we have a dimmer, yeah. but we basically have a way where we can cut off uh -huh. the chip that feeds the, the display. Okay. So we can have it just as quiet. Uh -huh. You know, if, right. if a person wants to have it just as quiet yeah. without the, the, the noise coming from the display, yeah. Uh, they can turn the display off completely uh -huh. 
and it also shuts off the chip. Okay. This is an important part. But in the case of the phono, yeah. it, there was no way I was going to put a chip in there right. because this is too sensitive. Right. This is for the drive system, right. and we can hear a difference. Yeah. But in a phono, the difference would be much more because of yeah. the gain level. Can you turn off the light as well? Yeah, you can uh, dim it yeah. or you can turn it off completely. In this case, it does, it's just for convenience. It, it doesn't have an effect on the sound. What distinguishes this phono from other phonos that yeah. I've heard? I mean, I, 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 I mean, we make it, so yeah. I love it, but we could have not have succeeded yeah. quite in the way that we've succeeded with this. Some of this has to do with luck. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, you, you have to work hard, but right. you also have to, it's a little bit like mining gold. Yeah. You can dig all you want, mm -hmm. but you need a bit of luck to find the gold vein in the, yeah. in the ground. And, and I think what is, what is particularly phenomenal about this phono, first of all, is the extremely low noise floor. Right. I mean, it's super quiet. Uh -huh. It is a tube phono. It has four signal tubes, uh -huh. two per channel, yeah. and it has rectifier tubes. But besides a very slight tape hiss, there's actually no hum, no noise, yeah. nothing mm -hmm. that, that you would hear in the right. speakers. And when you listen to the music, you hear that the noise floor is particularly low. And that took four years of work yeah. to get to that point. Okay. So it's, it's an extremely quiet phono. Yeah. It's extremely dynamic. Yeah. Part of it because of the fact that it's quiet. But secondly, this, these power supplies yeah. are just dynamite. Yeah. You know, you want to have you know, a playback system that can do all the subtleties. Yeah all the sensitive stuff, yes. but that can also do the scale uh -huh. and the attack and the, mus the muscular sound. Yeah. And when you have both in one thing, uh -huh. that's, really, that's really nice, uh -huh. right? Yeah. A very even frequency response, very, very deep bass. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say, interestingly, this phono uh, communicates as much information in the low, low frequencies as it does in the mid-range. Right. It's really difficult to achieve, and it's got all the air you want, it's oh, quiet, it's yeah. got the bloom of tubes. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's really the product that I would have designed for myself, mm -hmm. and I was really going after what I like yeah. when we were working on this. That's what you did with the Pro as well. You know, that was the product that you designed for yourself, exactly. wasn't it? Exactly, yeah. precisely. You are using these at your home as well, right? Of course, yeah. not, not because we build them, but because basically it is, you know, our, our issue initially, why did we make a phono for starters, the, yeah. the last phono and then this one, was that, you know, phonos are, are very variable mm -hmm. as to their the quality of their performance mm -hmm. from one phono to another phono. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just a question of budget, it's also a question of design philosophy yeah. or, or, or how much they've actually achieved uh, a level of sound that I would, I would, you know, I would think would be appropriate for our, our turntables. Yes. So it was difficult to have a constant uh, quality of presentation when right. we were, uh, you know, doing presentations all over the world. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, I met uh, Vicilario Sershadis of uh, TLA uh -huh. had a show maybe 12 years ago uh -huh. and I really admired his electronics and we started talking about doing a collaboration to make right. a phono so that I could have some predictability uh -huh. in outcome uh -huh. when I was doing presentations. So who was the golden ear uh, with that project? We worked together uh -huh. really, really uh, closely together. It was a lot of work. It took three years. Uh -huh. And uh, we, we, uh, we, we worked together on it. We were very happy. It was a very successful product. Mm -hmm. But it's a product that was lacking in certain things, you yes. know. And, and, and working with different, uh, with, with then with uh, Aristomenes uh, Georgiades' his son, I, I helped them a little bit on the design of their amplifiers, their preamplifiers. We did some experimentation with the GZ32 rather than the EZ81. I had done some experimentation with the 6350 tube that we were using in this. Mm -hmm. And and so it became, uh, it became obvious to me that we could rethink mm -hmm. the phono to bring it to a higher level yeah. of performance. 
And initially it was more a question of uh, integrating these new tubes that I think have more, uh, ha have a deliver a higher performance. Uh -huh. But uh, it was, it was uh, also a redesign of all the transformers, all the chokes. Right. Uh, and the entire circuit, and the, in the end, we redesigned absolutely everything, the step-up transformers, yeah. everything we learned uh -huh. on the first one uh -huh. and more, and, uh -huh. and, 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 and from the development of the TLA gear. Uh -huh. uh, we, we went into uh, developing uh, further the phono, and yeah. it, it was a four-year job. Even though we started from right. something, it took four years to finalize. Right. It was a very, very long process. But I'm very happy with the, with the result today.